Now then, people, and welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. Uh, and a new feature, a new show that's going to be running uh, every week called The Midweek Fix. I'm not sure what time it will drop on a Wednesday, but it will be out on a Wednesday, all right? We've both got very busy lives. But as you can see, uh, to my... Is it left, right? You're right, you're left. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I got Lucy with me. Now, Lucy, I tried to pin down... Uh, on a number of occasions, uh, yeah, no, not literally. <laughs> I, just out there. Um, I tried to pin her down to do uh, something like this for for quite some time. I think yeah. um, we seen each other when it was the BBC Match of the Day X stuff, right? Yeah, we did the um, the football focus, the Man U yeah. thing, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And I just recorded a bit, and then you were about to record a bit. Yeah, yeah. And I knew from that point, I thought. She knows her stuff. She sleeps. <laughs> let's 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 sort something out. So I've managed to to arrange that, and uh, hopefully, well, not hopefully, it will be every Wednesday. Uh, one of these will be dropping the midweek fix. Just looking at the previous game, any current goings on at Leeds United, and of course, looking ahead to the next fixture. But before we do any of that, how are you doing, Lucy? You all right? Yeah, I think it's. Um, I didn't really want to rehash Saturday, but I think. <laughs> We need to not sweep it under the carpet. We need to like analyse it, get it out of our system, and then move on. I think. Yeah, I think <laughs> I feel lucky being in this position because because I speak about it quite a lot on the here and different things. It's actually good therapy to actually get it out yeah. uh, rather than bottling it all up. I don't know what you think. Yeah, because I've seen a lot online where people say it ruins their week, and it really does ruin mine. And it goes yeah. into like Monday and Tuesday, and yeah. when it's such a massive part of your life, yeah, like it really does affect your mood, doesn't it? Uh, where some people 100%. can just switch off and yeah. carry on, but it is such a massive part of all our lives. So yeah, it, it really affects me. Yeah, quite a lot. I get it. Like. It's even worse as well, like when you're working and stuff, because you then have to go into the workplace and people are like, yeah. how did you get on at the weekend? And then it's all <laughs> over again, you know? Yeah, no, it's uh, yeah. pretty bleak. Yeah, pretty yeah, bleak. it has been bleak. I think it's been a bit of a bleak season, really, Lucy, hasn't it? Oh, God, it is. I mean, what can we do, though, with the injury situation? Yeah. It's... Um, I think that's the worst part. It's out of our control. Hmm. Like, um, we've not got the squad depth, as obviously is very apparent at the moment. Yeah. Um, but then what can you do? And people are just wanting you to throw money, but it's just not, it's not the Leeds way. It's not the BL way. We've spent money, but what? how do yeah. you fix it? Yeah, I know. And just on, obviously, the, the squad, it, it, it's something that every time we lose a game, and we have to turn to the bench, or we do have injuries, which is quite a lot, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you blame Beals? Like, do you think Beals is at fault for having that small score? Because I do believe if we had a different coach, we'd have a massive score. Not massive, oh, we'd yeah. have a bigger score. No, it is true. And um, it is trust in the process. We've trusted the process for like two yeah. or three seasons and it's worked. But is it just knackering being a Leeds player? Uh, the first thing I noticed was um, we went to Ellen Road. How the the right word to use is how slight the players look. They are tiny, you know, in real life. And uh, I think Dan James he looks really bulked up, you know, compared to like the other players. And I just think with the injuries, have they? I don't want to say burn out because that's what all the journalists say, but mm. I feel like there's only so much a human body can take. Yeah. And so then, like you say, you've not got anyone else to rely on. You've just got the kids on the bench. Mm -hmm. um, I saw a stat from Saturday where uh, Southampton, their bench um, appearances combined is like 2,423 hours combined is, I think, 385 of wow. which four of which four short is, is 275 <laughs> of those appearances that's so brilliant. when you look at it like that that's yeah. quite frightening isn't it when you yeah. look oh, wow. at it like that 
That is quite the stat. See, that's why I brought Lucy, you see. She brings she brings the knowledge, you see. That is mad, though, isn't it, when you think about that. And I bet the average age as well, like, oh, they're God. all, like, 89, and then you've got four shows, like an old gadget, you know? <laughs> it is, um, it's, uh, it really is mad. Like, and I, I do agree. I think, you know, the, the small squad um, has, it's not ideal for us. And, and when you touched on as well about, you know, the Bielsa burnout. But I think there is maybe a question that this is the actual Bielsa burnout that yeah. everyone speaks out season after season because we know as fans that we don't taper off or we've never tapered off at the end of a season. If anything, no. we've got better. If you look better. second season championship, last season in the Premier League, we finished better. Um, but maybe now going into their fourth season, some of them, that they are actually feeling the BLs of burnout. Do you think there's a case for that? There is, and I don't know about you, but you know how um, we accelerate norm in the last sort of 10 minutes yeah. of a game, especially last season. And, you know, journalists used to take the mic and then we'd say, but look at the, what we've achieved in the last yeah. 10 minutes. I found, uh, especially with the West Ham game, when there should have been that urgency and that pressing that we're known for, I just feel like that just wasn't there. And mm. as a fan, I found that quite frustrating to watch because yeah. it didn't look like the Leeds way. Um, and then I think with Watford, we made it difficult for ourselves. We were, we were fairly yeah. decent, but it was a poor opponent. But I don't feel like there's that energy level in the last, sort of 10 yeah. minutes of a game where, you know, we've got the odd goal or mm. turn things around. And I just don't know whether you've had like the Euros, which a lot of people featured, have some had that break. Yeah. I'm not too sure. Um, and I don't I want think to that's, say burn out. That, that's, that's might be my key concern as well, Lucy, is obviously we're used to going for the full 90, going yeah. for the 95th minute. How how many times? Like, you, you go back to that Wigan image where I think it's Josh Windash breaks and then all you yeah. can see is a sea of white shirts. Yeah. We're not seeing that now. Like, no. And, and for me, like, Click is a prime example. He looks beat by the beat. 70th minute, you know? Yeah. Rodrigo, yeah. the same, you know? They look yeah. done. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what it is that's going on and that's the only thing if I think of that it's taken its toll. Yeah. Obviously, we don't know what goes on in training. We've no. got the classic midweek murder ball. But yeah. um, what else have they upped the ante even further to try and get um, this makeshift team up to speed? Because they are just thrown together at the moment. It's obviously yeah. not our normal 11. Um, but, yeah, no, they do look... And I, I don't like saying it because there's still been elements of decent football, but obviously yeah. sat, to me, Saturday didn't show any of that. Was that your I worst did, game? Do you that think, was where, Bielsa? for me, was it, we were just unrecognisable. Yeah. You know, if you'd have flicked that on, I'd have said, well, that's not us. Yeah, yeah. It just, I, I, it, watching it, it was difficult to watch. And there were elements where you could see they were trying to press. But it almost looked, you know, when you watch kids play and they all run after the yeah. ball at the same time, <laughs> it was a little bit like half-hearted. It was a little bit yeah. like that, I noticed. And I think Dan James made quite a few breaks here and there, but it was bleak. Like the stats mm. are just appalling. What is it? Yeah. Three shots, one block, two off Terrible. target. They had like and, 19 or something like that. Yeah. And I, I listened to um, All Stats Aren't We earlier on and um, Josh Hobbs made some points and he said, like, our stats comparative to last season, passes into the box, mm. dribbles, pressures, all these were down and the one that's gone up is long balls. <laughs> so, yeah. so that tells you imagine. where we're at, you know, because we're running out of ideas and we're just... Ah, let's just go Long ball. and check for Dan James or whatever, see if he can get on the end of it. Get I just don't know. Like, it's just like you say, chalk and cheese from what we're used chalk to. Chalk and cheese. And it's literally like the stats as well with players like Harrison. I think he was dispossessed five times. It's just the most in any game by a oh, player who wow. we were dispossessed. I think it was 12 times. Um and yet, like we're out relying on people like Harrison, and they're not yeah. at their top end of their game. It appears at the moment. Uh, it's it's really hard to watch, and yeah, 
it, it's quite it is worrying because there's nothing else you can do and so you can't blame the Elsa now because we're in this boat what do we do with yeah. it because there's nothing yeah. you can do if, the, if they're injured or they're isolating or whatever um but yeah the people that are on the pitch it's just not clicking mm. at all um my main my, my main hope after Southampton and we'll we'll touch on some specifics on the game but during the international break we had quite a lot of players away on international duty we had some injured even the under 23s now we find that yeah. a lot of them are going away on international going duty away, yeah. so his preparation for the game wasn't ideal like if we think about murder ball like you've mentioned that happens on a you know midweek is normally we see the under 23s promoted into that and they have this yeah. game whereas if a lot of them are on international duty a lot of our first teamers are injured or on international duty then yeah. maybe the quality of that and it's even like tyler for example he'd have been away with wales all these yeah. players that were stars a lot of them weren't at the club so my main hope is that maybe that had a bearing on it and hopefully for Wolves, we see players back and, and yeah. we, it's it's not even for me, Luce, it's not even about the result. It, it's more about, because Wolves are a tough team. Yeah, they've won oh, three on the bounce. Bound. They're a good side. It's not about the result. It's about the performance, do you know? It is, and I think... Prior to Southampton, the performances were there. People yeah. argue that they weren't. But for me, West Ham, I feel like yeah. we really did show who we were. We were just really unfortunate. Mm -hmm. um, Watford, obviously, they're a poor opponent. But still, there were elements of us. But it is about performance. But we need to start getting points on this points. board because it is giving me anxiety. <laughs> and I saw something where they compared to our... Um, the the after the championship winning season, not the championship as in before the Premier League when we won in ninety two, the season after when we were rele relegated. Yeah. I think we, we didn't win a away game all season, did we? I don't think. Season, yeah. I think I saw a table the other day where we we're at the same uh, oh, position and points as, as that. <laughs> <laughs> the sense of foreboding that's coming about. Yeah. And you think, oh God! It's, it's so worrying, isn't it? Like. I, I, I sat the other night and I, I haven't really entered my psyche up until this point. And then, because I was like, no, nah, we'll be fine. Wait till we get to 10 games. We've got Norwich, we've got Southampton. We might get a point against Wolves. We've got Leicester. They're not in great form. We'll have points. And then obviously we get beat by Southampton in the manner of the defeat as well. I like sat on my own the other night just pondering it. And I was thinking, I can't, I can't. I can't deal with going back down there. I no, literally, I can't. like, I don't know what I would do if, come the end of the season, we we were relegated again, and oh, just the guff that's down there. You know, no, I just I can't deal with it. Lucy. Poor. When you look at the fixtures down there, they're just poor. I just, yeah. I feel like I've turned my back on that, mm. and we're in the Premier League, but it yes. is very worrying extremely yeah. worrying and i i'm used to managing my expectations even in the bielsa era because of everything that being a leeds fan mm. involved i'm always like when i saw you outside the ground i was gonna say week, that yeah and you said <laughs> how are you feeling i'm like oh i, I just don't think we'll get anything. even your dad was like no we've got it <laughs> <laughs> and i just that that's me i still don't allow myself to ever think we're going to quite ever achieve everything. That's why the last two years have been a bit of a blur. Um, and I am, like people have high expectations of this team now. Personally, yeah. I, I don't anymore. I think that's, that's gone, that, that tight dream of, oh yeah, entering Europe, mm. you know, that's all obviously gone. It's about staying up. That's for yeah. me, that's as best as it can get now. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that's sad, but it's true. It, it is, it is. That's where we're at, unfortunately, now. Um, you know, and just, I'll ask you the question now. Do you, do you think we'll stay up? <sighs> oh. <laughs> I think uh, the Southampton performance has rocked me. If we yeah. show character against Wolves, I'll say, yes, we'll stay up. 
Southampton was, is a sign of things to come, then no. no. Because when we've been playing how we've been playing, you're going to get a result at some point. That's the Bielsa ethos. Like yeah. in the championship when we had like a goal drought, his belief was if we still keep playing like this, the odds are, yeah. you know, we have to score. So we just need to get that back. And I did a tweet saying it was a bit like after the Forest game where that was yeah, just shocking. Sure, yeah. And then we came back against Brentford and showed like a world beating performance. I think Cooper had like the game of his life against mm. them. And that needs to be the bar set. And then yeah. he's come out showing that. You know, and we didn't even win game. that game against Brentford. No, we did didn't. We? No. Kiko made the error. And I think Ben Rama <laughs> yeah. scored. And, yeah. But you're right. It were like, the performance. We were there was good. a resurgence. Yeah. And you could see, and I just feel like I hope they've had some kind of, Similar. you know, Bielsa bollocking of sorts mm. and get them back because it is bad. It's bleak. I don't know what, like, for me, it's Rodrigo is really disappointing yeah, at the moment. Massive, yeah. Um, I even said the other day, like, I said, just sell him in January. I know this, someone said it's too soon, awesome. but I was like, clubs wanted him in the summer, you know, and we said no. He obviously, maybe we won't recuperate what we paid for him, but I feel like it was a signing that was too good to turn down. And and I get it. And then we've made it and he like just doesn't fit what we need, whatever, wherever Bielsa plays him, it just doesn't work. So therefore, do we say, do you know, let's cut our losses. But I don't think the club will do that. But no. it is disappointing because no. I, like you, I was thinking... Full pre-season, no COVID because he had long COVID. Yeah, Bamford's out, but this gives him an opportunity to play in the nine, and he's just not. He's just not done it for me, um, which is which is really worrying. Just my thoughts on the relegation thing before we we deep dive into Southampton is like, I look at Norwich and Watford, and I'm saying to myself, they're down. There's worse team. <laughs> yeah, it's then it's then. There's only that one third spot. place, <laughs> and I feel at this minute that we are competing for that one spot with yeah. Burnley, with Southampton. I know they were better than us, but I still feel not Newcastle anymore, unfortunately, because they'll well, go. Yeah, maybe, 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 maybe. I hope that they get Frank Lampard and he really yeah, that'd be brilliant. So <laughs> <laughs> and I even think I would throw Palace in there, and I know a lot of people won't agree with that, but. They are playing good stuff, but they're not really getting results. They're getting the odd points. They still haven't yeah. got a win on the board yet. So sometimes it's, you know, all frills and no no skills yeah. kind of vibe. So, yeah. But, you know, Southampton, we, we've touched on it briefly, but I just want to focus on two, two, two areas. Now, I know me and you spoke after the game uh, on this individual. It was Adam Forshaw, and we were very much on the same page, you know, because I felt when he came on, he 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 was a midfielder. Like he, yeah. he was what we was lacking. Was missing. Yeah. yeah, he tried to help us retain possession. My brother, you see, my brother had messaged me. I didn't watch along at the time, but my brother had messaged saying, "Why is he bringing on Forshaw? We're chasing the game." And I'm like, "No, I get it. Like, but you can't just throw on strikers for the sake no. of strikers." And I thought Adam Forshaw give us something. And I know you felt the same. And I got a little bit of stick in yeah. the comments saying, "You don't know what you're talking about." Blah, blah, blah. But you were the same as me on Adam Forshaw. Yeah, I'm a big Adam Forshaw fan. I feel like even at our best, we've had a Forshaw-shaped hole yeah. in the team. I think he's one of those players that sits under the radar but mm. creates an awful lot. He picks out key passes. It helps sort of regain possession. Um, you need a Forshaw of sorts. And mm. obviously we've sort of replaced him for the last couple of seasons. Um in that game, if you've got somebody to pick from on the bench, fair enough. But like I said earlier, he's the most experienced yeah. player by a mile. Can you just throw on a couple of kids? Because, yeah, they're great. But if they were that great, no disrespect to us, they'd be at a top team, wouldn't they? You know, mm. if they're that age and they're great, they're going to be great elsewhere, not at Leeds mm. in the under-23s. That's my thought. They need to have a chance, don't they? And yeah. fair enough, let's try and put them on. But yeah, it's for sure right for when you're chasing the game. Ugh, if you had choice, maybe no. But in this particular game, what else could you do? And for mm. me, it was that middle of the pack. If you look back at highlights, 
the space in the middle is just a disgrace. You could yeah. just fit a bus through the middle. Yeah. It was just terrible. And I feel like nobody knows what position they're in. Pascal, no. when he's in the Calvin role, he's not good in the Calvin role. No. He likes he needs to have the whole game in front of him. Yeah. He can't sit in it that's what it was lacking. So he helped. Maybe it was a little bit too late. Yeah, they could have yeah. had him a bit earlier, but obviously he's injury prone. As we we need something. You make a good point. It, it, it's to join up the attack with the defence because at the well, minute there's nothing there. So that's why the long ball numbers are up and our it. you know progression etc is down because there's we're having nothing. to bypass that because there yeah. is nothing there. You know, when um, I was sat watching the Paul last night. Oh, I've seen you tweet, Liverpool, yeah, I've seen and I was it. like, "That is that what we need." <laughs> if what we need so. And then yeah. you've got like Noah Lang, who we were linked to, and yeah. he's been ripping it up in the Champions yeah. League as well. And it's like, oh, and even Conor Gallagher, we were linked to, has yeah. been ripping it up at Palace. So. At Palace, yeah, yeah, no, it's it mad. Um, crazy. You've just made me think then as well. Obviously, Pascal played, and we had what I'm now done with from Bielsa is this persistence, and he will continue to do it, with the 3-1-3 three, 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 when we come one. up against two yeah. attackers. Because for me, I cannot remember a game that we've played well whilst no. playing that formation. And, and I feel like with Wolves, that terrifies me because they've been sticking mm. like Chayare in yeah. like a two. Are we going to play... Triore no. against Cooper. Oh, he's, already, <laughs> he's already giving me like anxiety. Mm. <laughs> but you're so right. And like you say, it's not working, but then no. what it's do never you worked, do? Luke, so I can't. Maybe someone in the chat, uh, you know, those that are watching afterwards or watching live when this goes out will remind me. But honestly, I can't remember a game where we've played 3 3 1 3 and looked good. You know what I mean? It's been all over the shop. It is. Um, and, and like you say, if they've got Jimenez and the Dama Traore and oh god, and they like he destroyed us last year, yeah. Jimenez. I just yeah. think absolutely annihilated us, and mm. it is worrying. And like you said, out the back of the win that they got from yeah. two 0 down, like they're gonna, they're confident. Bounce three and three. Be, yeah, and I think are they top or joint top of the form table? Probably. Twelve yeah. from twelve points from fifteen. Mm. I know. They've really started clicking under the new manager, haven't they, for sure? And uh, yeah. we seem to be going the other way. But just um, this has gone massively under the radar as well. And it's sort of, it's a point that I think we should discuss because I see a lot of Leeds fans saying, don't use Tyler, use the kids, etc. And that's a fair enough argument. Or play Greenwood, we should be playing him, we should be playing Somerville. And, you know... Obviously, Geldart was brought on against Southampton, and I think it was the wrong time to bring him on. And oh, Bielsa, yeah. you know, Bielsa spoke about, you know, it has to be the right time. And I said that during the watch long. And then when he brought him on, I was a bit like, oh, he is like, he, he he's literally like, what can I do here? I'll just throw him in. But he, he was anonymous, and a lot of that's due to the fact because we were anonymous in that game. Yeah. Um, where do you stand on, you know, like, I think the guys at Square Ball always said, you know, get Eddie in and play the kids, don't they? Where do, where do, where do you stand on that? It's such a hard one. I mean, no, I feel like no one is a, a Tyler Roberts fan. It's, no. it's plain to see. Um, he, he is now, because he obviously was dispossessed. Do you feel bad goal. for him, though? Because he's the lightning aw- rod. Yeah, I feel awful for him. It must yeah. be horrendous. And for me, there's a player there yeah. And this might sound really cruel, but I just don't think he's smart enough. I don't think he's smart enough to um, change his mind. So he'll get himself in a position and he doesn't, he's just not got the intelligence to be like, well, I can't do this. I need to do this instead. Mm. I just feel like he's more really like you. Good. Yeah. And again, That's I don't want to be disrespectful. I just no. find that. So there's a player there, clearly, yeah. that, you know, he wouldn't be where he is if he wasn't but he's flat footed he's just it's not looking great and he has actually now been the most dispossessed player of the of the year that was a stat that I saw. in the premier league or no just for us i was gonna really. say <laughs> no, <laughs> well yeah to be fair he'll probably not be up yet, there anyway. <laughs> not, not yet, yet. <laughs> no 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 
there's still time yeah. um and so yeah how much more can you persist with somebody but what i love about bielsa is his blind faith in somebody and i feel like with bamford you know he got so much stick yeah, for did, such a did. long time and for me he's the most that we miss out of anyone oh. not for goals but what Bielsa used to say, he's not about just goals, it's his mm. hold up play, it's everything he can do and influence in a game. And we're kind of, I think everyone's realizing that now as opposed yeah. to then. And then, do we have faith in Bielsa with Roberts because he sees something that at the moment is not quite clicking? But you're right, with the with the kids situation, for me, people rave about under 23. It's just fake football to me. It's not real. It isn't, no, it's not no, real. Okay. They need they need loan time. They need proper football in a man's game, um, in, the, in an environment. You know, dare you throw a young lad at Ellen Road and be like, right there, you change the game. Mm. Like, is that a lot to put on somebody? 100%. And, um, I do think so hard. there are certain individuals within the under 23s, Gelda, Cresswell. I, everyone raves about Greenwood, and I, I, but I don't know if I've. I'm not saying I haven't seen enough in the under 23s. That's not what I'm saying, but I, I, I don't know if he. Like I, I agree with you to a certain extent because let's not forget in that under 23s there was Robbie Gotts, there was Mateus Borgus, there was um, Alfie McCallum, and all these players. Um, Alpha McCalmont's playing League One. Yeah. Um, Gotts League Two. Uh, Borgus, third division in Spain or second division in yeah, Spain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a massive difference oh, between difference. under 23s, too. And we've seen that in the Cups, like with your Crawleys or the season <laughs> before. Um, who was it we got knocked out with the season with before? The, um, the, with the with Mar- No, oh, the season before it was. Ollie Casey played at centre back. We were bad anyway. We were, but yeah, we were I blocked it bad. And then there was the whole one where I think Alioski got a late equaliser in the cup, and we were pants then as yeah. well. And, um, it's just a, it's just a, a massive step. Let's let's just have a chat about the man himself as well. Like I've stuck my neck out on Twitter. I don't think it's that big of a take, but I said I would never ever call for Bielsa to never. be. And it got quite a lot of traction in terms of people liking it, in terms of supporting it, which is good to mm. see. And the only reason I brought that out really is because I was in, I was triggered like by the comments on my video where people were saying, I think he's taken us as far as he can. Mm. Do we need to get it? And I, it really triggered me because I was like, are you hearing what you're saying? Because 24 hours earlier, we were raving about what he'd done to Phillips and Rafinha's okay. international career. And then one game, people were saying, We've gone as far as we can. I'm like, are you hearing what you're saying here? But listen, everyone's entitled to their opinion. But why? why I, I think it's madness, Lucy, to be talking it about. Is, it is crazy. And I, I will never, like you, I can categorically say I will yeah. never, ever, ever want him to go. In no. the same respect that Arsenal fans got to a point where they wanted Wenger out. That was quite clearly like the worst. Thing they've ever yeah, done. Sure. Um, and, you well, know, I you actually think... had Lucy just to jump in. I actually had an Arsenal fan, didn't know he was an Arsenal fan at the time, responded to my tweet saying, This is very naive, yada, yada, yada. And I was going, Well, you won't get it, mate, because you're not a Leeds fan. It's not just what he's done for the football, but it, the city and everything. It's brought everything. everything together. And then I said, Can I just ask who do you support? And he was an Arsenal fan. And he used Wenger as an example, saying he should have gone three years earlier. I went, No, mate. The reason you're in the position you are is because you hounded him out. You won't be where yeah. you are now. No. Do you know what I mean? Oh, so I thought, no. No, not for that. Because no. that a similar sort of management as in didn't always spend loads yeah. and did what he did with what he had. Mm. Um, and I will never, ever cut. Because it's still beautiful football. It wasn't on Saturday, granted. No. But what do you expect? What do you expect anybody to do in mm. the situation that we're in now? Who, yeah. who do you want? to come in yeah, exactly. and do so and we've done that in the past where we've sacked managers and but he's the one that's come in and molded all the yeah. who and people very... people worry about the squad now but mm. tech be yells are out of that equation and oh. their level goes 
and, and let's be honest, and I'm not like because I love them and I'm really good, but a lot of them are playing above and beyond what they ever probably thought yeah, we would, and that's ever. down to Bielsa. So remove him out of the situation, we probably drop down. Do you know what I mean? It is, and you could argue that a lot of them aren't meant to be Premier League players, but they are holding their own at the moment. Yeah. I think there's always arguments for Cooper that I think even on Saturday wasn't at his best, but then was kind of put in a block that you think, oh, that's what Cooper does. And they are playing above, um, but he's got them there. Yeah, we do need to add to the squad. And obviously yeah. everybody's got their qualms with Radrazani and the fact that he did that Adam Forshaw response and everything. And it was probably the wrong thing to do yeah. and put him on a pedestal like that. But, sure. um, and it is frustrating. But I think he gets frustrated because he quite clearly cares as well. You know, he's got us to where we are. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I would never want Bielsa to go ever. It's ever. a bit like... Chris Wilder at Chef United. None of them wanted yeah. him gone. No. And they were they were terrible. Do you know what terrible. I mean? And they yeah. never ever once want Chris Wilder wanted to go before the fans wanted. <laughs> yeah. He was actually going in saying, I took us as far as we can, and they were going, No, stay. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um the thing is, if that happened with Bielsa, there'd be no saying no stay, go, no, I'm gone. Like yeah. you're not listening to me, I'm going home now to Argentina. Okay. Um and, and, he'll, think, and he'll, he'll have to leave shortly because he's getting to an age, isn't he? Like, he yeah. can't carry on forever no, anyway. No. Which that and I think this could heart. be his last season, you know, Lucy. Potentially. Yeah. I'd say at least I feel like it's that coming, or one it? more. It is. Yeah. And just for, for himself, like, mm. he can't keep just going forever. No. And, like, with the news of Steve Bruce today, I think even he's admitted, like, this is probably my last yeah. job and just for the the pressure like yeah. what it must do to your health as well and mm. be else is a perfectionist isn't yeah. he like he is he'll he'll be uh, like much worse than how we're feeling it oh really, he, oh he? yeah he can it's it won't be good enough for him which is mm. what's making me wonder what's happening behind the scenes yeah. is he really putting them through the paces because he just believes that they're better than what they're Producing mm. at the moment, perhaps. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Before we, we before we touch on wolves, I just want to ask you: What do you think we'll do anything in January? Because we've mentioned about the squad, where we currently are. Do you think it needs some sort of injection, even if it is just a couple of loans? It's really oh, we need something, don't yeah. we? we? Need something. Um, there was all that talk, talk yesterday. Was it Ross Barkley, Ross wasn't Barkley, there? Yeah, no, yeah. Like, no. No, no, it would take that, it would no. take him a season to get mm. <laughs> to get to the we level. Just break down, man. This is the thing we're fighting the croc. Do you and know I, what and I, mean? I, and I think croc. everyone's panicking. People have seen a name who's been like a name at various clubs, yeah. and like, yes, yes, we'll have him. Like, I don't want to get desperate. Yeah. Like, it has to be the it, right fit. <laughs> It really frustrates me as well because I banged the Conor Gallagher drum, right? Yeah. And and people were saying to me, he's not good enough. Why should we improve another play, another team's player? He was at West Brom. They were rubbish. Doesn't make him a bad player just because they were. And yeah. now, like you say, I now see Twitter because Barkley was once okay. okay. You know what I mean? And the media <laughs> yeah. hyped him up massively. Yeah. Like, he's now like, yeah, Barkley, because... And it's like, not for me. And I don't no. think Leeds would go after him either because no. there is no point for me. It doesn't make sense. If you're going to bring someone in, you need to make sure you bring someone in who's not got a poor injury record. Yeah. That's one of the first things for me because we're already on light. So don't bring in a player that's going to yeah. possibly break down. Yeah, no, you know? it's for sure. Yeah, you can't just jump on him I don't I, for me he's a lazy player I mm. don't know if he would be up to speed yeah. with the demands and I think with Bielsa and Orta and everyone behind the scenes they really invest in the person as a whole yeah. don't they like yeah. their like ethics and yeah. things and they have to be the fit all round in the team you know the morals like he he loves all of that and I just don't mm. think Barkley's that kind of yeah. person for him let him go to Newcastle or something for me <laughs> oh, that's God. fine 
<laughs> go Newcastle or Burnley or whatever, not at Leeds United. I just, yeah. I'm not having it. But I think maybe a lot of people is speaking more des desperation, just like have. I think they'd take me at this point and just put me in the centre of the really? park or you, Lucy. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Just, just so someone can fill that space. Fill that gap. Um, I don't know who. I don't know who. I can't no. think of who would be because we obviously won't have loads of money to spend no. I don't believe that we ever do and people are obsessed with spending money and I just think do you not remember 16 years ago I just I don't want to go through that again either and it, it, it's it's the the it's the FIFA generation it's yeah. the football Twitter avatar you know yeah. generate like when I go on Twitter now I literally see so many football avatar accounts just ripping our team to shreds yeah. and they're Leeds fans and I'm like what's going when did as soon as we hit the Premier League it's just gone boof and yeah, um, there is yeah, a shift. yeah it there, has there been quite a, a shift and um shift. And I can fall into the trap of thinking Twitter is the majority, when in actual fact... I think that it's, it's like representative of the fan base. But it's not, but it's though, not. is it? You know, you can go... <laughs> that's what I mean. I, I genuinely would get into myself into a tiz was if I'd taken a party and everyone's jumping on it and I'd be like, oh, God. And then it's like, no, actually, this is minute into yeah. and half Matt even at Ellen Road loose so it, <laughs> uh, yeah no and it, and it but it's the damage that they can do you know when people yeah. tag people yeah. in yeah. and everyone's human at the end of the day and yeah. um and I think it'll have hurt Rads a bit you know with the backlash which you yeah. know granted he shouldn't have probably done no. but I think it'll have hurt him and it filters yeah. down you're know, tagging Tyler Roberts He's not gonna just become unbappy because you've yeah. called him shit last week and tagged <laughs> him in it. You know, it's probably gonna do the polar opposite. It's gonna be yeah. detrimental, and I think Twitter can be quite damaging for that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it can, it can for sure. Like I don't even. There used to be a time when I would search the LUFC hashtag just oh, to see what no, was going on. Not anymore. Never, no. um, <laughs> I used to check responses to official tweets. Not anymore, because <laughs> no. it's like, it just drives me insane. But like, yeah. literally, I would go on break. This is a couple of seasons ago, like, and I would go, because like you say, we didn't have all these info. It was genuine people. Yeah. And I would go on and go, LUFC, see what's going on. Refresh, refresh. But now it's like just an absolute minefield. Um, yeah, it's, it's mad. Let's let's just do this as well, because as I say, it's the first show. Let's cover as much as we can. And then as the weeks go on, it'll just get more on the games but um i did a video the other week about rafinha um about you know moving potentially to liverpool they were interested in um obviously this calvin chatter as well um where i'm at i think rafinha goes in the summer i think we keep calvin for another year yet um i just wanted to get your your thoughts on on where we're at with them too because they're key aren't they we've seen it the weekend just how much of a loss yeah and I'd like to think if you were going to be selling them that it needs to be a, a decent fee. I think yeah. Rafinha potentially could go, well, definitely would go if <laughs> Rafinha in the championship. <laughs> 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 they both <laughs> Well, yeah, they're, they're, I think quite a lot. Yeah. So that 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 would be like a dead cert anyway. But yeah. I think, like you said, there's interest. Um, but for me, as, as amazing as he is, would he go missing in certain sides? I don't know if he's a perfect fit for people. And I think he'd have the tendency, would they bench him? You know, if he goes to a top, yeah. top side. Yeah, of course, yeah. And I think he'd have to think, oh, yeah, I'm, I might get Champions League football. But, you know, would he get Champions League? You mm. just don't know. You don't know what kind of squad he's going to potentially. I think... Like if Liverpool, for example, like when Manny or Salah, like Salah's not stopping on Manny, they're both having great seasons. But like yeah. you say, if he were to go there in the summer, they're still going to be at the top of their game. So he's not yeah, going to start, course. is he? No. Um, so, so maybe I am, maybe. Um, but I'm all, I, I just think in my head, I'm resigned to the fact he leaves that's, this, this Yeah, th again, that's my half-empty approach. But I just like to think, if he's obviously money-orientated, he wants he to don't look that way, though, does no, he? Don't, then, he doesn't. Then, obviously, that's the right move. If he's thinking, I want to be part of something, build mm. on something, I'm hoping that there's some sort of, like, five-year plan for the club and he wants to be a part of it, then, you know, 
he needs to stay. But I think our thing with Calvin, it's the the, the pay, isn't it? Like yeah. we need to put the incentive there to like, yeah. well, stay. We're paying you this because mm. um, yeah, it would just break my heart to um, you know, see him go to like Manu or oh, don't, mate. Don't yeah, imagine. which obviously it's happened. It's happened. Yeah. Never say never. And um, I think. Yeah. It's the same, even just Rafinha in a lesser sense. Like anyone goes to them clubs, and you just can't enjoy them as footballers anymore. Whereas oh, if you never. if you went to a Liverpool or whatever, I, I could enjoy them. I don't mind Liverpool. That's just my where my my head is. I know some don't like them, but I don't mind. So I could still enjoy them if he was ripping it up at the Champions League with like Salah and Firmino, like last night's game. What a fantastic game! Oh, it was like probably the best. In yeah, Rangers, if that's it, if that's yeah. Rafinha, I can be like, yes, that's my boy Rafinha kind of thing. Whereas if he was pulling on a red shirt of, of my, no, I'd want him to do oh, really bad. Or, yeah, yeah you know like what I mean? That. So yeah. hopefully we'll keep on to them. I think I'd be more confident if we're having a season like we did last season and we're like, oh, a few, few more additions, Europe's on the cards, but this season it's like, yeah, we're a long way but, off. Like, but I'd way. still like to think Bielsa is again moulded him and put him on that platform because he wasn't like well known before no. um obviously they were slightly outraged that we got him their yeah. fans are a bit weird aren't they with their reaction but um <laughs> obviously the Bielsa way was we weren't playing him because he likes them to get up to speed and yeah. then he just burst onto the scene didn't he I mm. think um he's the one like Premier League signing. I suppose you could throw in Lorente as well, but if we're looking at injuries and stuff, it's oh, still not that's being the ideal. only issue. Yeah, yeah. Lorente is world class, but yeah, he's like made out of wheat a bit like yeah. sauce. <laughs> <laughs> if he's made out of wheat, it's a, I mean, Robin Cox made out shredded wheat. Do you know oh, what I mean? No. Like, <laughs> I don't like, even know what he looks like anymore. anymore. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Oh, I know what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Love that, Lucy. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. Right, let's, uh, let's discuss Wolves then. Um, yeah. We've got Wolves at the weekend. I've seen now, like I know for sure, that Furpo's going to be out. I've seen a tweet earlier on on Twitter to say that it's going to be a couple of weeks. So he's definitely going to be out of the side. Yeah. We're waiting on hearing Bamford, Calvin and Rafinha like, yeah. if tomorrow's press conference comes and them mm-hmm. three are in, does your because I know what I'm yeah. like as a fan, Lucy. As soon as I see them three are in, I'm going, We're winning, we're oh, winning. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I don't know what you think. No, I, I would agree there. With, with Calvin, he just um, he just offers those angles to play mm. off, um, just commands everything. Bamford, obviously, again, oh. holds the ball up. How much do we miss? Go, oh, like, yeah, that's oh the thing. And then Rafinha, for me, that's when you have like a massive chance. Yeah. I love how, like, we haven't really mentioned Furpo up until now, which for yeah. me says a lot <laughs> <laughs> about the fact that I don't realise that he's there. No, not massively, just because of my allegiance to, to Mr. Alioski. <laughs> <laughs> because I feel like obviously he got so much stick for such a long time and I think it's a case of not knowing what you have until they're gone and um, I think a lot of people said oh actually uh, I think Alioski has uh, done this and done that I'm not one of them I'm not one Lucy I can't lie to you I'm like I still don't see what what no no no, serious honestly um but that's good, man. It's, it's good to. I think we first, well, they used to argue that Alioski was a defender who couldn't defend. He wasn't a defender. He was never intended to be a yeah, defender. True. But yeah, he was put there because where else are you going to put him? But he could go forward a bit too forward at times because he was yeah. always offside. But for me, <laughs> Furpo, um, I've sat in my seat and seen Furpo make mistakes, and I've waited for the crowd to like erupt in the way that they did with Jamie and it hasn't come and it makes me quite res- I think I think that's what it is I'm like I'm too loyal I'm too I'm like loyal and resentful of the fact that <laughs> if that if that had been Jamie right yeah. now everyone would be up in arms <laughs> and it's just silence and I understand like let's give him a chance and I think he has grown a little bit as the games have got on um so, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm right in saying you're going to be the... 
commissioner of the Furpore Hate Club in the staff. <laughs> no, <and sit. laughs> no, no, I'm giving him a chance, but like, I feel like he doesn't track back enough and he's not going forward enough, and I'm a bit lost as to what he's offering for me mm. at the moment. So when he wasn't on the team sheet, I ne- didn't necessarily like, notice. But Dallas, for me. there's a lot worse, I think, for me this season, Luce. I know, I don't know what's going on. There's obviously something behind, because Zaza said personal stuff. Yeah. And so when you've got a full team, you'd have argued, well, maybe don't play him if he's not in the right headspace. But then yeah. when you've got no one to choose from, we're, you know, he's a professional, we're paying him, he needs to start. But I don't know what's going on. I don't know mm. what's happening there. It's a, I hope he's okay, whatever it is. But yeah. it's, it's, it's hard to watch somebody kind of... Because he was... Start well, player of, the, player of the year, weren't he? Yeah, he was like below average and then went to what he yeah. did last season. And then he's kind of going Him, down a little bit. Click. Click. Bailey. They're all falling into that bracket. They're yeah, all it's, falling. It's, it's, it's as they're getting older, I think, when they're turning, yeah. like, like as soon as that alien turned 30. I think, like, it's been a downward spiral <laughs> since then. Speaking so from experience like, being 33, uh, that's what yeah, happens. Yeah, that's, that's what, happens. what happens to me <laughs> as well. But, um, yeah, I just, I don't know what it is. It's, like, it, it's very sluggish and sloppy at times their individual play and then you'll see a glimpse of them and you're like yes that's Luke that's yeah. Dallas but there's no consistency and for me lead the Leeds way is about consistency and that's just not what we're seeing and then with the injuries you know what what's Ailing going to be like when he's back um oh, it is it's it's so hard to think about <laughs> Let's uh, let's let's finish on a positive. Yeah, right? let's, let's try not to let our wrists. Yeah. Try... <laughs> <laughs> Can we win this game on the weekend if we do get <clears throat> Rafinha, Calvin, Bamford back in this side? I mean, if if they're not, like we can't be too positive. If they're not, I'm I'm not looking forward to it, I can't lie. But no. with them in the side, can we get three points? Oh yeah, I, th- I think a thousand percent with those in. Definitely. I, I'd always back us with a more or less full strength team. Like that's been instilled in us now. But if they're not there, I mean, I would take a point all day long, a point yeah. all day long. And the performances last season against them, I mean, they won both and they didn't actually score. You know, we, we yeah. scored more or less in both of the melee. Thing, the deflection of Calvin and I think we should have won away and we didn't so mm. I, I just think this is going to be a game where anything can happen I think they're on a high we're on a low give us a it's score there. prediction oh god god I'd happily take one all Um, <laughs> I think there might be a few more goals maybe the other way but um oh. Let's this do, is supposed let's, to be the positive part. It is, let, right, the positive part. If if we've got our team, then let's go 2-1 to us. 2-1, one. that's we, where I'm at. If we haven't, I, I want to say something opposite, but we'll stick with one all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, like, 2-1. Um, um, and tomorrow, when that, when that press conference happens, and if we see Bamford's back and... Calvin, I think Calvin and Rafa, Rafinha will be fit for sure. And even yeah. that might be enough. But I think we need Bamford back ASAP. Um, I think Dallas it, sounds is gonna have to like it, it sounds like Bamford's out for a bit. From when I've heard still? him on his, when he's been on his podcast things, I just feel like it sounds like it's a bit of a way off, I oh, think. don't, mate. Don't. <laughs> Sorry. Please Sorry don't. for the positive ending. <laughs> 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 yeah. Great, great. Well, but, we're, both, but... we're both going for wins, provided people are fit. If yeah. not, then, then we'll leave it there. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to add, Lucy, before before we finish up? No, this has been therapeutic, though. I feel yeah. like a weight has been Good. lifted. <laughs> Good. That's what it's for. And I hope those that have watched have felt that as well. Yeah. Uh, me and Lucy will be doing this every week. So make sure you join us. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. 
please smash a like on the video as well and subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out Lucy on Twitter. She doesn't have a channel yet, but uh, <laughs> but we'll put um, her Twitter in the description as well. So make sure you but check it's out. very Shows. sarcastic, my Twitter, and yeah. people take it a bit too seriously at times. Yeah, you know your stuff. <laughs> it's good to have female representation in it. That's yeah. what it's all about. Um, yeah. But yeah, thank you as always for watching, and uh, and we'll see you in a bit. I'll have my preview out tomorrow. Uh, I'll have my review after the Saturday game and, you know, all that other stuff. And then hopefully next week's show, me and Lucy will be bouncing because we've beat Wolves at Eleanor. That's the plan. <laughs> anyway. so. um, yeah. But thank you for watching. <laughs> yeah.